Today I'm going to do an oil change on this little 125 motorbike. It's come up for its first service, two months old, or 600 miles. It's a Suzuki GSX-S. Quite an easy job, it needs a clean. But with the roads being like they are, it looks like that after, after you take it out for the first time. Okay, I've removed the rear seat and it came with a small tool kit. Not much in it, but I'm going to use one of these to remove the bottom plastic cover so it can get to the oil filter and the drain plug. In fact, I think I might get to the drain plug with that even removing it. Everything I need to know is in the book that comes with it, the owner's manual. Tells you to remove the cover that I've done and shows you where the sump plug is. Gives you all the information you need, how much oil goes in it. So I'm fitting genuine Suzuki parts to keep the warranty on it. Even gives you the torque settings. So it's easy enough to do. It even shows you how to reset the service light when you're finished with it. I use this oil drainer because it's low enough to go under it and it also is going to allow me to take it away and get it, get rid of the oil easily so it's just under this side here so you need the engine warmed and then you switch it off obviously and then right under here you see there that's that's where we're going to take it it shows you in the manual though even if you didn't know I don't want, to, don't want that sump plug to fall into that hole. That would be a bad day because I'd have to cut it open. So, okay, so we take this off. And there shows you the pictures in the in, in the book. So here's the engine oil. Looks fairly clean. It's not like when I'm working on cars and it's absolutely black by the time you change the oil. Can I check that's tight? Mm -hmm. And it is. <laughs> it's not a good idea to use an extension with a torque wrench, but sometimes it's the only way you can fit in because it changes the actual torque mm -hmm. that you think you're setting it to. Okay, Leon, let's go and play. Yeah. Now we're going to change the oil filter. And that goes right in there, so it's those two bolts. We'll take that one out now. I took the bottom one out already. Just got the top one to take out. Okay, so I'm going to get a new O-ring seal. Can you see that in there? Bits of metal, I think. Must be. It doesn't look good. I suppose that's why we changed the oil after two months or 600 miles. So I'm going to take a fill one of these and point forward of another one. Pull this all in slowly. Okay, now there's a sight glass on the side of the engine right here. And if I tilt the engine so it's upright, that should show you the oil. See, it's coming up there in the sight glass. And it's between the, the full and the low, the F and the L. So that, that means that's okay. My other thing, I need to reset the service light and I'll show you how to do that. It tells you how to do it in the book anyway. I'll go and get the key. Right. So got sell and adjust, it says to press and hold that and then put the ignition on and it says for 3 seconds and it must reset it, so that's the light out now 
So now the service light's reset. It's kind of like you get in cars. Now there's no service light. It's all done. That's the oil change done and the service reset. I'm going to do the tyre pressures. I'm doing them whilst the, the tyres are cold. I've not driven it anywhere. And I'm also going to adjust the chain, but I'll just show you the, the chain adjustment. I've already adjusted it once and um, I had to adjust it quite a bit. It tells you how much there should be, how much play it tells you in here. It's like 20 to 30 millimeters of travel when you lift the chain up and down, but I'll show, I'll show you when I get to the chain. So I've put a block of wood under the side stand and that just about had the bike straight up and down. And then I've put a jack under the suspension there. Lifting it up on that and it's enough to get the wheel off the ground. So what it's saying with the chain is, if you were to lift it, the difference between there and there is 20 to 30 millimeters. So I'll try and get a ruler against that. But that's at the tight place. So if I rotate the wheel, some of it will be tighter and some of it will be slacker. Yeah, you know, first of all, find the tight place. Like that's getting slacker. And I'm gonna clean the chain and then adjust it. it needs a good clean. Doesn't take long to get covered in road dirt. So yeah, I'll find the tight bit and adjust it up. I've got the 17 and the 19. I've loosened it already. I'm going to adjust it up equally on both sides of the screw and you'll see it on there. It has to be the same gap on both sides so we know that the wheel's straight so that it's in line with the bike. That big nut and bolt that goes right through there is 65 newton meters. That's equally adjusted. I've got this card behind there, the chain's okay, it's adjusted correctly, I'm going to wash it down and then re-grease it, it's starting to get rust on the chain already. Next I've got to take these bags off here and drain any liquid that might be in there. Okay, so here's the chain cleaner. I'm going to spray, oh gosh, I'm going to spray that. I've got the cardboard to collect it in. I've got this brush. I'm going to try and give it a bit of clean. It will come up looking shiny new eventually. I keep spraying it and doing that a few times. It comes up looking really shiny. It's just the time of the year. It's hard to keep the bike clean. I use this bike all the time to commute to work instead of taking my car now. There as well. We'll get this really clean. I'll mark out a bit. Okay. It smells nice, this chain cleaner. I don't know what it smells of. Eventually it will be clean anyway, you get the idea. I'll just keep going. Okay. clean. So now I just get the, the chain lube and put it on. Now if I put it on from the inside of the chain it's going to fling it into the chain with centrifugal force as I drive. But if I was to spray it on the outside it would just fling it off. So I'm going to spray this 
Let it get soaking. Get it into the length, so I don't want it on the tire. Obviously, I don't want to slip off the bike. Okay, so that's the chain done. This one's only like your weekly check that you would do. Tires are cold, I'm gonna check them. Right, so right there I'm at 20, roughly 28 and a half. What's it saying here? 29 and 29, that's, that's the difference there. 25 and 25. Oh, that's if there's two people, the bottom one. So it's 25 at the, 25 at the front, 29 at the back. So we're okay at the back. I'll put the cap back on. I don't know where it rolled to. It rolled away. Oh, there it is. What I would do if it was a bigger surface is take out the brake pads and clean it all up. But this is just the first surface. And i got to do it in every, I think it's 2,000 or 2,500 miles now or every 12 months so I'm going to be doing it soon enough because I use the bike all the time so I'll take the pads out then and I'll leave it today because it's starting to get dark but I'll do the tire pressures but I'm just going to do the same on the front I use this gauge because I find it more accurate than the one that's on the pump so uh, I think when you're on two wheels it's worth getting the tire pressures right it tells you what type of tire in the book it says to use the same tires so I'm just gonna keep it the same so that's about it the service lights reset the tires done the oils changed I'm just gonna grease a few more things up but basically it's just a quick oil change on a, a little Suzuki 125 I might even do some stuff uh, with the Pico scope and see if it's the same like the ABS sensors or the fuel injector or different things and just see how it compares to the car that I'm more familiar with. At least that way I'll have known goods in case it goes faulty afterwards. A slightly different video, but um, thanks for watching.